Well, it is time to go fill my cow's deer tag. Michael has predicted that today was the day I would fill my tag. I appreciate his optimism, but history is not a good indicator that he would be correct. So we're getting up really early. We're the first ones out of camp by a good stretch because Marcus has a hot spot. Marcus was down here last month and shot a buck and my buddy Wade shot a buck, roll the clip. And uh, we're going in there. Marcus says it's only about a five hour walk through the cactus to get there. So, I don't know about say, five, five hours. Or did you say 15 minutes? Something like that. Okay. So, <laughs> that's how we're doing. The rumor is, if you climb this mountain up here, there's bucks everywhere. They don't know what we know. But, uh, oh, should have brought the 20 gang. <laughs> Trying to get up to this ridge here. Glass down into some of these areas. Oh, here comes one over the horizon. Ooh, here comes another one on the skyline. That's a good buck there. Just came around that tree. That's the kind of buck someone else would shoot. Oh, there's still a two-point there? Yeah, he's right to the left of that other buck. Oh, well then there's three bucks then. Because I watched the two-point go on way, a big walk, way over there. The bigger guy's horning a tree. Yeah, I got it. That dick deck is what chased that doe further down the hill. I see something going on on that other hillside over there. It's got his attention. Now he's turning. Uh-oh, what's uh -oh. got him spooked? There they all go, flags up. He was looking down to the right. Like maybe there's a bobcat or a coyote or a lion or something over there. I wish I could tell you exactly what happened, but there were about 15 deer on the hillside across from us. And something over here on this other hillside got them and we heard some snorting and blowing how they sound for danger. And they all went around and out of this basin. There's a really nice buck on the passenger side. He was four and then he, well, he had eye guards and then he had Three nice ones and one little knob out there. So he's five on this side and four on this side. And he wasn't super wide, but he just was heavy. He came way back and then for me. He was a really cool buck. And then there was a really nice forky that I thought that would work. And then there was a little dick dick, like a spiker, about, about that long. So there were three bucks among those 15. I'd have shot any of the three. Who knows, could have been coyote, bobcat, mountain lion, anything like that that got them spooked. Cause there was definitely some snorting going on over there. We were sitting here and Looking over here, 
I think Marcus is, well, there's a really nice buck with a doe up there in the skyline. What had happened is another buck and a doe came in from the next basin, dropped right down in here. I wish the buck and doe would have bedded together. I don't know why they're bedded 70, 80 yards apart. Just gonna have to see what he does. Could be a long, hot afternoon. I've been watching this buck for almost an hour now. And the wind is consistent. Where I can't come in from the right, the wind's going right to him. So I'm gonna have to make a big loop up over these ridges. And I think I can come down that one spot because he's got a bunch of trees around him. I'm hoping those trees will make me obscured. So if he's here, I'm coming down here. He's got trees that, between him and where I'm coming. The idea is not to stalk him. His doe is bedded about 75 yards to the left and there's a rock wall about 30 yards from where she's bedded. The idea is to get down and around and get to that rock wall and wait there until he gets up off his feet and hopefully starts moving her around. Well, it's taken me a long time. I was way over there. I dropped all the way down, came up, around, came up this side. The deer are right down in that bottom, right over my shoulder. And I got the wind going the way I want right now. I just don't know if they're gonna see me or what. <sighs> Hot, long. I've been at it for about an hour and a half. But I'm gonna crawl out to this peak here and see if I can locate him. Good shoot. See those trees right in the way there? I could see him. Did you see him stand up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's no way I can thread one through there. So I moved over here. That's what I was like, just get drawn. If, if I could have got another step, <clears throat> when I saw him walk and I came to full draw, if I would have got to one more step over here where he stopped there. Yeah, so I was like, just draw, just draw. He's going to stop right where that goes. Yeah. Um, and he did. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. right. 30. <clears throat> Depending on where on the hill he was at, he was down lower <clears throat> to that spot. Is 39 yards. 
but I just, I was one step over here and you can look, you see those, what are those, Akatia? Now that was a cool stock, Marcus. I don't care if we got them or not. Oh yeah. No, that was a. Uh, it was, it was some cool footage. <laughs> We're gonna go down. They've they've seen some quail in here just stumbling on them, which is always a good sign if you stumble on Mern's quail without a dog. Dude. That means there's probably three copies, my friend. Three. So that's stumbling without a dog. So <laughs> chances are pretty good. We're gonna get into some birds. Have you ever shot a marines before? I never, never shot a quail before. So this will be a first if we find some. But watching it happen last year was awesome. With any luck, we'll get into a few coveys right up here. So there were there were birds in here. This is kind of dry habitat for what I'm used to. But that's what I like to find, man. And that's why it's cool to have the other people running around. You find something like this, nobody else is going to come in here and hunt Merns. It just doesn't look like Merns habitat. Yeah. They'll be, they should be right along this pond mm -hmm. just because it's softer soil. They can dig for the tubers and stuff. Yeah. And they're cool. But just be careful, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. She was getting birdie. Down. Down over there. Did I hit him? Yeah, I think so. Somebody did. Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. Hold. 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 Good girl. Hold. Hold. <laughs> Drop. Good girl. Yes. It's <laughs> my first. Uh, That's awesome. Upland bird ever. Really? Yep. Congrats, dude. That's a, a unique one to get. So that's a that's a male mern. It's a first year bird. It doesn't have all the coloring on its head. It's easy to tell this time, but what a pretty bird, huh? It's a good thing it was flying straight away from me. It's always that's how I easier. shoot well. <laughs> and the spots underneath is just crazy. See our tail tail straight. She's right on a bird now. Whoa! Wish I could redo that one. Okay, those, are, those are the ones I miss all the freaking times. I can get one that goes crazy over me or something like that. It went over quite a ways, I think, but there's there's going to be birds right here. Nice shot. Nice. Dude, it is intense, man. Shy, hold. Hold. <laughs> Drop. Yeah. See? Now that's in a, uh, could be an adult male. I'd have to look at the feathers, but look at the difference in the face mask on it. Yeah. Man, what a cool looking bird. Sorry, dude. I got to grab some water for her. So, so these are tubers. So th this one had a lot of tubers in it, so it's been digging. You can see it looked like a, a lily bulb or whatever. And that's what they're digging up when they're scratching in the ground. But they also have some some mesquite seeds in them or cat claw seeds in them. But the other one had all forb seeds and uh, cat claw beans. So they're just there's a lot of food up here for them, for, huh. obviously. And we're going to go back down to the pond, kind of work our way back to the pond, let her just chill for a little bit, and maybe go to where you saw other birds because these things are so... They hang in a small area. We didn't even get halfway up that hill where we ran into a, yeah. another cubby. And so that they're they're really they just have a really small home range. So if you find them one place, one time they'll they'll be in there from year to year to year. I can come back in here unless something yeah, you know, climate wise happens or climate wise knocks them out. You can come right back in here next year and hit the birds in the same place. Crazy. Cool. Now that I there? shot one, I feel like and then miss 10. I feel like I'm just <laughs> lucky, really. That's all that, that was just beginner's luck right there. Zero skill. Well, we're gonna go try another one. I think these guys are gonna go chase Havelina. Uh, cool. See, it can. How many did you get? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta see how many shells Brian Call left me with. They shot a few times when we were up in there. <laughs> 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 
He's gonna like this a little better. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's you. I don't know why. That's good, huh? Let's go find some birds, I know. Let's go. Oh. Over the top. Good girl, guy. <laughs> All right, any more? Find him. It mm -hmm. came right over my head and I couldn't get turned around on it. Yeah. Those birds didn't go very far from no, where they, they came out of the bottom. No. <laughs> There's always another one. Always. That's cool. Let's go find another cubby. Alright. Sixty-two yards. Going right in the direction of the You get him? She's got him. Sam, come right toward me after she drops the bird. Okay, come on, the Chad. Bird's right on this point to your right here on your right. <laughs> Whoa. There's about five more right in there. Yep. Nice shot. Good girl. Well, there's, yeah, right where you're at, there's, awesome. Thanks that was the one that. That was Sam, the one that Sam got up on top. First Merns. Awesome. <laughs> what was that, Sam? First Merns. Nice, Only dude. took me about a dozen shells. Dudes. <laughs> nice shooting. Get the one to the right? Yep. Yeah. Nice. You like that? This is sweet, man. Yeah. Nice shooting, dude. Look at that thing. <laughs> man, those are cool. Awesome. We're gonna go try one more spot. With the weather's just just right right now. So who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? You are. It looks like we've got a pretty good cut here. We've got some oaks in here, good good grass cover. We've got a good wind blowing. It'll be blowing right in our face. We'll be walking right into the sun, but the dog will be able to pick up the sand a little bit easier. Well, we got one. Seize it. <laughs> Come on. Go drop. Another male! Woo! That'll do. That wasn't a bad little two minutes out no, of the truck, huh? Good. In a place we've never been before? Yeah. Good girl, Shy. Smoke that one, one brother. Out of two ain't bad. <laughs> good girl. See that buff color on their breast? Oh, totally cool. different. The males are all black and white. Cool. Good girl. You want a drink? Good green? girl. Well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One down. <laughs> he smoked another one. Sam's doing all right out here. Good girl, Shiloh. Sam might limit out on his first day. Ever Mern's quail honey. We're gonna just trek home and if she stumbles on something, we'll chase it. It's perfect, yeah. <clears throat> trek yeah. back to the truck. Yeah, know. I think the road's just right up here. Yeah. Well, we stopped back after our morning coos deer hunt. I would say we put the javelina and jackrabbit on, but really Marcus put the jackrabbit and javelina, javelina on. What is that recipe called, Marcus? Uh, it doesn't have a name, it's called. It's called Marcus Just Does It, is the name of the recipe. Marcus is in Southern Arizona and he's 
fake it is kind of the name of the recipe. I don't know. I did nodding, yeah. So we have about mm, an hour to go do a quick evening hunt. Tag along. I don't know what's going on here, but we told these guys there were some deer down here. And look at them. They all, they bailed out and they went after him. I'm just hanging out on the side of the road, guys. <laughs> Is this how you kill cuckoo's deer? Uh, I don't know. Where's the rest of you grain? Aaron just went and put a stock on a mule deer buck up on the ridge. Oh. Yeah. Well, I got, I put some face paint on today, so things got pretty serious. Really? Is that, I thought maybe you just rolled maybe around in the... Patty. Yeah? Yeah, that's kind of what I do. I make myself look like a cow patty. They have no idea what's happening. Really? For those of you who don't know, that was Casey from the Hushin crowd. They got our buddy Aaron Warbritton from the hunting public. They're up here somewhere. Casey's waiting for him to come back, and hopefully they got a deer. So. But Marcus says that before dark, I'm going to shoot a Sonoran Dick Dick up here by this water tank. Alright folks, Marcus just spotted a buck up on this hill up here. And it went out of sight about half a mile up the hill. So I don't know if I'm shooting right way enough left, but Marcus assures me if we run fast we can get there. Marcus talked me into it. We ran. I'd say we ran most of the way up this hill. Half the way. It was, that, that was a good push. The deer was skylined on that knob and he dropped over here. And we're not sure if he's down in the bottom, if he went that way. But when we got part way up the hill, we could feel the wind coming this way. So our only chance was to make a loop downwind with the rare chance he was coming across this way. Let's go back to the house and make sure that we haven't boiled the pot dry. We left Greg there with it, but he was really busy working hard, so he might be one of those people who concentrate heavily. And we might have burned the shack down trying to cook our evening dinner and sneak out for an hour long hunt. So you guys uh, got some quails today, there? We did. Heck yeah. This one, I think, was a bodybuilder. Look at the legs. <laughs> Look at the legs on that sucker. <laughs> Tell me, what is that? It's just a cheese crisp. Cheese and green chilies on a big flour tortilla. I like cheese. Yeah. But they're made by the world famous. <laughs> they're made by the way, world famous meat. Look at that next trail down. They're good. They're real good, dude. Me gusta. Me gusta. Muy caliente, mucho. Huh? Mm. Hey John, John or no doubt. I'm telling you, that guy needs a quick game and trick. All right, what we've done here, Avelina back straps, antelope jackrabbit back straps. On the portable Traeger, Hickory chips, 300 degrees, been marinating for about an hour. We'll see how it goes. Brian has never eaten jackrabbit before, I've right? Never had jackrabbit. I will admit though, I took a sample with your test fingers. with my finger. Yeah, that, that worked. Good. Mouse? It's, it's really good. good. Bueno? I'm so good. I'm gonna have one. <laughs> Tastes so much like a, like a roast. Dude, that is some of the best meat I've ever had. We're going jackrabbit hunting when I get home, day one. I did a little bit of separate of just javelina because I mixed them on the tacos. Both equally as good, but I think I like the javelina a little bit more. Dude, it blows my freaking mind how good it is. This is an antelope jackrabbit. Backstrap. 
Fresh off the Traeger. The pass is running, I'll feel better. Mmm, mmm. That's good. It worked? Cool. That works. Holy smokes. Cool. <laughs> Never would have thought Jackrabbit tasted good. All right. We're just about ready to break out the Havelina back strap here. This is like the true test because this is just straight up grilled. It's not like we break it. Yeah. Ever. It's really. No. Havelina back strap. Less done, more done. Okay. Away we go, huh? I'm good for now. Thank you. Mm. But that's kind of Dude. Is this Randy's Avalina? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Pretty good way. It is. Yeah. How many people do you hear? That, that sucks. I never shoot a Avalina. <laughs> Literally nobody has said this tastes bad tonight. Out of everything we've ate. Like, it's unbelievable.